They have made it to the 2014 World Championships. Who will join them? Double kill, triple kill, gets the quarter, gets the penta kill! And they're going to solidify a trip to the World Championship. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the World's Reveal Show. I'm Rivington Bison III, along with James Dash Patterson, and today we're going to reveal for the very first time the four groups for Worlds. That's right, Riv. Today we'll take a look at each of the 16 teams and who they will be battling with a prize to the quarterfinals in Busan on the line. That's right. Now, besides Dash and myself, we have assembled a trio of experts who will break down each group. That is none other than Joshua Jat Leesman, Sam Kobe Harmon Kensler, and David Freak Turley. How's it going, gentlemen? It's going pretty well. And the nice thing is we've been kept completely in the dark, so I really just can't wait to see what these groups are. Yeah, excited to start theory crafting here. Yeah. It's gonna be fun. All right, guys, before we reveal anything, let's take a quick look at the format for Worlds this year. As you know, there are 16 different teams who will be fighting to become the 2014 world champion. Europe, Korea, and North America each have three teams in the championship, along with two teams from the GPL and two international wildcard teams. These teams have been drawn into four groups, A, B, C, and D. The four teams in each group will face the other teams in that group twice for a total of six matches for each team. So that means that this year, Cloud9 is guaranteed to play more than three matches at Worlds. That's right. The first group stage consists of groups A and B, and their matches will take place in Taiwan at the NTU Sports Center in Taipei, beginning on September 18th and wrapping up on September 21st. Groups C and D will play their matches in Stage 2, which takes place in Singapore at the Singapore Expo. And those games will start on September 25th and finish up on September 28th. The top two teams from each group will then advance to the quarterfinals in Busan, Korea to battle it out at the Bexco Auditorium starting on October 3rd. Now the four best teams will then move on to the semifinals in Seoul, Korea, where they'll compete in the Olympic Gymnastics Arena on October 11th and the 12th. And then on October 19th, the two teams left standing will face each other in the Sangnam World Cup Stadium to decide who will be the 2014 World Champions and take home the Summoner's Cup. And because we believe that knowledge is power, here's how the group draw worked. All of the teams were sorted into three pools according to their regional seeding. The top pool is made up of the number one seeds from China, Europe, Korea, and North America, while the middle pool consists of the number two seeds from Europe and North America, along with the number two and three seeds from China and Korea, and the two teams from the GPL. The third pool consists of the number three seeds from Europe and North America, as well as the two international wildcard teams. Each group is made up of one team from pool one, two, two teams from pool two, and one team from pool three. And just a heads up, there is a region limit as well, meaning that there can't be two teams from the same region in the same group. That's right, and now that the math and legal disclaimers are out of the way, let's get to revealing and checking out the groups. And what better place to start than with group A? Let's do it. The first team of the four teams in Group A is one of the two international wildcard teams, Turkey's Dark Passage. These guys are undisputably the, de the best team in Turkey. They won every single season in their league in both 2013 and 2014. That's winter, spring, and summer for both years. By winning this year's Turkish Grand Finals, they, the team qualified for the international wildcard tournament for the second year in a row, and this time, they crushed their competition and earned their first trip to Worlds. Let's take a look at their lineup. In the top lane, it's Fab Fabulous, and roaming the jungle is Crystal. That's right. In the mid lane, it's held down by Naru. And to AD Carry, it's Holy Phoenix. He was the first Turkish player to make it to Challenger in the EU West solo queue ladder, and he also earned a pentakill at this year's wildcard tournament. He's supported by Touch, who's joined the team just before the international wildcard match, where his performance at Gamescom took him from sub to starter in this year's world championship. So that's the first team. Now let's move on to the second. Joining Dark Passage will be the GPL's number two seed, AHQ Esports Club. While this is AHQ's first trip to Worlds, they have been a dominant team in the GPL for the last two years. 
They were favorites to, the, to represent the region last year before they were upset by the Gamania Bears at regionals. But after some off-season roster changes, AHQ blasted into the 2014 season and finished second in both the spring and summer season. Just two weeks ago, they secured GPL's number two seed for Worlds by sweeping the Saigon Fantastic Five at the GPL regionals. So let's take a look at this team's current lineup. In the top lane, it's Prides. Formerly the jungler for the team, he moved to the top after the team reformed. And Nas now fills the jungler role for the team. And in the mid lane, it's Westdoor, who is widely regarded as one of the best players in the GPL. At one point, he was ranked number one in the North American, Korean, and Taiwanese solo queue ladders. Rounding out the team in the bot lane is Garnet Devil as the 80 carry and Green Tea at support. All right, let's move on to the third team in Group A. It's going to be the number two seed from Korea's Champions League, Samsung White. This is the second straight trip to Worlds for Samsung White, who competed last year as Samsung Ozone. While they did not make it out of the group stages at Worlds last year, losing in a tiebreaker to Gambit, they qualified for Worlds once again this year by beating the defending world champs SKT T1K in a circuit points tiebreaker match to secure the number two seed for Korea. Four of the five players who qualified for Worlds last year remain on the team, so let's check out their roster. In the top lane, it's the Teleport Master, Looper. Their jungler is Dandy, who is considered to be one of the best in the world with his Lee Sin Pentakick. And Pawn was the former mid laner for Samsung Blue until he traded places with Dade. While coming in at 80 carry, it's Imp, or as many call him, Double Imp, because his playstyle is so closely related to Double Imps. Rounding out the roster for Samsung White is Mata, who himself is often compared to Mad Life. Fans of Champions have said if Mad Life is God, then Mata is Buddha. Certainly high praise. High praise indeed. And rounding things out in Group A is going to be the number one seed from China, Edward Gaming. This team was formed back in February, and in just seven months, they have become one of the best teams in China. They finished second in the LPL spring season and then went on to win the spring playoffs, the summer season, and the summer playoffs. And during those summer playoffs, they only dropped one game. Edward Gaming was assembled by picking some of the top Chinese players from teams like World Elite and Positive Energy and combining them into a super team. They're basically the Chinese version of Alliance. All right, so let's take a look at their roster. Koro One is in the top lane. And in the jungle, it's Clear Love, formerly of Team World Elite, where he competed in the Season 2 World Championship. Their mid laner is Yu, which is short for Unstoppable. And the first half of their bot lane is the AD carry Name, who is regarded as one of the best in the world and the most popular player in the region right now. He's also the first player to win three straight LPL titles. That's right. He is joined by their support, FCZF, another former member of World Elite who competed at Worlds with Clear Love. He is often called a support carry and has played unconventional supports like Elise, Syndra, and even Twisted Fate. And Riv, by the way, you probably don't know that I studied Mandarin. His name actually stands for Fong Zong Zui Fong, which means chase the wind on a windy day. Amazing. So these are the four teams that will face off in Group A as the first stage of Worlds gets underway on September 18th. It's China's Edward Gaming as the number one seed from the LPL and the number two seed from Korea's champions, Samsung White. With the number two seed from the GPL AHQ Esports Club and one of the international wildcards, Turkey's Dark Passage. That's right. All right, guys, there have been Group A revealed for everyone for the very first time. Chat, let's start with you. What are your initial thoughts about the matchups? I mean, seeing this group, when we saw that Dark Passage and HQ were in the first group, we were yeah. kind of thinking like dream group for whoever the next two teams are. Yeah. And it's interesting because the next two teams are two of the strongest teams at Worlds. This is a really lopsided group in power, like some pretty weak teams and some really strong teams. Yeah, like your first feeling is, oh man, I feel bad for AHQ and Dark Passage. Yeah. But the second thing is, I'm so excited for the matchup between White and EDG, just because they match up really well, I think. Yeah. EDG, yes, they're incredibly scary right now. However, they showed a couple windows, actually, in the Chinese regionals this weekend, and First one was their early game. They kind of flubbed up an early dragon and an early tower. Mm -hmm. And White have a very strong early game as well. The other thing is the mid laner for EDG, uh, Yu, with a couple of unforced errors. I think if Dandy can help Pawn take control of that mid lane early, 
White can come out of this one as number one, even though they're the second seed. Yeah, I think it's it's an interesting matchup, of course. It is the group of life with teams who just don't need any help getting out of the group stage. Those were, <laughs> like, those are the two teams I would guess to get out of the group stage no matter what group they were in. There wasn't a possible bad group for those two. But, like <clears throat> yeah, ultimately, it's just a matter of the fact that it's a battle for first and a battle for third. And it can matter, honestly, who gets first. It'll generally be an easier seeding into the quarterfinals. And third place is still at least a difference in prize money, and it's a difference in terms of sort of national pride and whatnot. So yeah. there's going to be two really fun battles there, but it's kind of the only two matches I'm going to watch. Yeah, for some more context, like AHQ, second seed from the GPL, but they were very far in second. Like, they got 3 0 by TPA very convincingly mm -hmm. in their finals. Uh, just to touch on Samsung White a little bit more, a lot of people think they're the best team at Worlds. So, like, whichever group the number two Korean team got drawn into was probably going to have a bad time for most of it. So it's really unfortunate for HQ and Dark Passage. They didn't have many hopes of getting out of a group to begin with. And then EDG uh, is regarded as pretty much by far the best team in China. But this, as you said, will be a great measuring stick against yeah. a top Korean team. I mean, and it's not just White's laning phase that everyone talks about, but also their map movements and their timing for objectives, their positioning, prepping for those timing is immaculate. So very excited for this one. What I'm also kind of interested about with this group draw is it makes every other group really a lot closer. Because you have the best team in China, arguably the best team in Korea, and two of the probably weaker teams from pools two and three so the other yeah. three groups are going to be true. really close. It's true because we were always worried. It's like, what if SEA number two gets drawn with the international wildcard team? Those two top teams, they were going to make it out of groups easy. And it's Great. like, well, those are the two top teams that were probably going to make a death group for someone. So. Right. All right, guys. Well, we have to ask you still, before we head on to group B, I need to find out who your favorites are. Who are your two favorites in group A? Which squads do you think will be advancing to the quarterfinals here? Jap, again, we'll start with you. I feel like I can speak for these guys. <laughs> uh, EDG and Samsung White. I'd say number one is actually White. They're probably favored in this group because potentially the best team at Worlds and EDG to take second. Yeah, I think that we're going to agree with you. I am excited to see Westor finally perform yep. because this guy's been playing the game for so long. I remember pre-season one, he was playing on the North American server because they didn't even have a server. Yeah, I agree with you down the line. Number one, Samsung White. Number two, is going to be EDG. And yeah, I want to see if Westor can carry. It'll be fun. All right. So you've heard from our experts, but now we'd like you to tell us your two favorites from Group A. Send a tweet to us at LOLE Sports with the hashtag World's Group A. And not that Group A isn't an exciting name, but let's see if you can add some swag to it. So send your nickname suggestions for Group A to us on Twitter with the hashtag at World's Group A. And we'll reveal our favorites on the World's Preview Show that airs on September 17th. That's right. Now let's move on to Group B. They'll com be competing alongside Group A in Taipei. The first team in Group B is the number three seed from the European League Championship Series. It's going to be SK Gaming. This is the second trip to Worlds for SK Gaming. And after blowing up their roster before the 2014 season, it's coming a lot sooner than most people expected. No one except SK Gaming, that is. They finished the spring split regular season in first place before losing to Fnatic in the finals of the spring playoffs. Then in the summer split, they slipped a little, but managed to fight their way to a third place finish at regionals and secure a trip to the 2014 World Championship. That's right, so let's take a look at SK's not so new anymore lineup. In the top lane, you have Freddy122, who was brought over from Against All Authority. In the jungle, it's Sven Skaren, formerly of Ninjas in Pajamas. Jezz's was moved from the Challenger series to take the mid lane, and at 80 carry, it's Candy Panda, who will be making his second trip to Worlds. While this will be the first trip to Worlds for N-Rated as a player, he was a coach for the Lemon Dogs, who made it to Worlds last year. That's right, and that brings us to the second team in Group B, and that is the number two seed from China's LPL, Starhorn Royal Club. Most of you know them as the Royal Club team who qualified for Worlds last year, making it all the way to finals where they were beat by SKT T1K. After that loss, their mid and support players retired and their top lane Ackerman left for LMQ. After a disappointing spring season this year, the team was handed to new management, who shook up the roster by bringing in four new players. And with that new lineup, Royal Club took third place in the summer playoffs and earned a spot at the Chinese regional finals where they qualified for LPL's number two seed. So let's take a look at the team's current roster. In the top lane, it's Cola. And in the jungle, it's one of Korea's most famous junglers, Insect, who brought his famous kick to the LPL this season. And in the mid lane for Royal Club is Korn. Uzi Ai is the AD carry and the only returning member 
of the team that competed at Worlds last year. His Chinese nickname is Puppy due to the protect the puppy strategy where the rest of the team will safeguard him until he turns into a late game carrying machine. And joining the puppy in the bot lane is another former Korean player, Zero. Okay, now it's time to reveal the third team in Group B. This is the number one seed from the GPL. It's Taiwan's Taipei Assassins. Ever since their underdog victory in the Season 2 World Championship, TPA is one of the most famous teams in League of Legends history. After failing to qualify for the Season 3 World Championship, the team bounced back in 2014 and managed to win the GPL winter, spring, and summer seasons and earn the GPL's number one seed at Worlds. All right, let's take a look at their lineup, which has seen multiple roster changes since that Season 2 World Championship. In the top lane, it's Aki, along with Winds in the jungle. And it's morning in the mid lane, which actually sounds like a great AM talk show. Yeah, it does. Coming in at ADC is BB, who is the only remaining member of the team that won the Season 2 World Championship. And rounding things out in the bot lane is their support, Jay. And finally, we have the last of the four teams in Group B, and that is the number one seed from the North American LCS, Team Solo Mid. TSM is one of the oldest and most recognized League of Legends teams competing today. In fact, they are so well known that they, you'll often hear audiences chanting TSM even when the team isn't playing. They were originally formed back in 2011 to compete in the Season 1 Championship where they placed third. Since then, they have been one of North America's most dominant teams and are the only team in the world who has competed in every World Championship. And they earned the number one North American seed for this year's Worlds by beating their rivals Cloud9 in the playoffs for the first time ever, thanks in part to some new faces on the roster. So let's check out that lineup. It's Dyrus in the top lane, and it's worth noting that Dyrus and Fnatic's Yellow Star are the only two players to have qualified for all four World Championships. Their jungler is amazing, who came over from the Copenhagen Wolves in May when the odd one stepped down. Their mid laner is, of course, Bjergsen, who also serves as the team's captain and shot caller and was the spring split MVP. And in the bot lane, it's Wild Turtle at 80 carry with TSM's newest member, Lustboy, at support. And those are the four teams that are making up Group B. First, it's Team Solo Mid from the North American LCS and China's China's Star Horn Royal Club from the LPL. Then we have the Taipei Assassins from the GPL and finally SK Gaming from the European LCS. So there you have Group B. Now let's send it over to the guys. Freak, you undoubtedly have some thoughts about these matchups. What are you thinking? So this is a really, really interesting <laughs> it's group. A cool group, yeah. It, so first of all, this is the best group TSM could hope for. There's no Koreans in it because they never beat Koreans, so that's <laughs> good for them to very to you know start things out. Honestly, anyone could win this group. There's a lot of really good teams, and I'm just excited to see it play out. <clears throat> I think one of the matchups that I'm really excited for is especially the TSM versus uh, the Royal Club matchup here because Uzi versus Wild Turtle in the bottom lane, both of these guys go crazy at times. Yeah. And both of these teams are also pretty aggressive early. So this is going to be like a really good clash and bloody games, I think, between those two. This is one of the, this is probably the coolest group at Worlds. I haven't yeah. even seen the other two groups. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Only because every single team in here has a really interesting story. I mean, I even look at SK Gaming, the first team that comes in here. They're used to being completely underestimated. And if there's a place they can succeed, it would actually be in this group. Uh, Royal Club, we should actually mention, just because there's going to be confusion, Uzi is what everyone knows him as last year. Uh -huh. Everyone's turned to calling him Uzi I, the letters in his name. So we'll be getting used to that. It's just, that's what everyone called Uzi I is yeah. how he refers to himself. Who's going to be awesome in this group? Like, seriously, TSM, you want to say they're lucky because they drew into a group without a Korean team? Yeah. But every team in this group can play. Sure. Which makes it so fascinating. I mean, you're right. They didn't draw, like, an international wildcard team, which mm -hmm. just honestly are huge underdogs. They could have drawn an easier group by getting AHQ instead of TPA. They could have, again, gotten a wildcard team instead of SK. But overall, this is still a very fun group with really strong teams. Um... I, I really do like the, the Starhorn Royal Club matchups just in general. Again, all these teams are very good. It's going to be fun watching UZI run around and try to kill people. Yeah. <laughs> but you can't underestimate any single team in this group. And Chinese teams, just like we see LMQ in North America, they're very aggressive. They don't always take the smartest risks. And so uh, even though I think uh, SHRC are a very strong team here and likely to make it out, there is upset potential in every single game here.
Yeah, and especially I think TPA, a lot of people will be underestimating them again, but they got so much stronger right. with wins. And they yeah. still have yeah. BB who can carry super hard. A lot of these teams actually uh, earlier in the year were kind of a lot lower than they are now and mm -hmm. made really big rises. Royal Club as well got a lot better much recently. And everyone remembers that TPA that went to the All-Star Challenge and like mm -hmm. lost a lot of games. But they were playing at the time against the best teams pretty much from every single region. That's not necessarily true in groups. They have tons of potential to succeed in here. I really don't know how to call this group. Yep. All right, guys. So as we did in Group A, which teams do you think have the best chance in this group? Freak, we'll start with you. What are your picks? Uh, for me, my number one pick is going to be Starhorn Royal Club. I think they are just the strongest of the four teams coming out here. They are incredibly good. Number two for me is actually going to be TSM. I think TSM are strong enough to make it there, though my close third place is uh, probably Taipei Assassins. Mm, yeah, you know what? I hate to do it again, but I think I'm going to agree with Freak. I do have to keep Royal Club there as number one. And the second one is a close follow-up, mm -hmm. but I'm going to go with TSM. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm actually surprised both guys picked TSM, but honestly, I think TSM will win this group. Just really? based on everything. They had such a strong run at the end of the season, and I think they'll continue to improve. Royal Club, even though they did finish second at regionals, were third in the LPL playoffs. They got beaten up by a lot of kind of shaky-looking teams. Uh, I know we're not doing Dark Horses. I think, <laughs> I think SK would be a Dark Horse, but I do think Royal Club is probably going to take second in this group. Okay. All right, sounds good. And of course, we want to hear from everyone watching as well. Send your favorites from Group B to us at LOL Esports along with the hashtag Worlds Group B. We'd also like you to come up with a snappy nickname for Group B. So send your suggestions to at LOL Esports along with that hashtag Worlds Group B. We'll reveal, reveal our favorite answers during each of the upcoming group stages. Now let's move on to the next eight teams. Group C and D will be competing in Singapore beginning on September 25th. We'll start things off with uh, the four teams from Group C. Group C and the first team there is the number three seed from the North American LCS, LMQ. Soon after moving from China to North America, LMQ made a name for themselves by dominating the North American Challenger Series by knocking out former World Championship participants XDG in the promotion tournament. LMQ proved they belonged in the LCS. And during the summer split, they never fell below second place in the regular season before securing the number three North American seed at Worlds at NA Regionals, where they will now compete for the top spot. So let's check out their starting lineup. In the top, it's Ackerman, who qualified for Worlds last year as part of Royal Club. And their jungler, No Name, who was also the team captain, while their mid laner, Zhao Wei Zhao, won the summer split MVP. Rounding out the team in the bot lane is the duo of Vasily at 80 carry and Moore as support. Vasily led the NALCS in kills this summer, while Moore racked up the most assists in the league. That's right. And the second team in Group C is the number three seed from China's LPL, OMG. This is OMG's second straight trip to the World Championship. Last year, they performed brilliantly in the group stages, losing only one game to the eventual champs, SKT T1K. But despite a strong start, they were defeated in the quarterfinals by their fellow LPLers Royal Club. Since then, the team has made some roster changes and had a strong showing throughout the LPL this year, never dropping below third place and finishing second in the summer playoffs. That sent them to the Chinese regionals where they qualified as the number three seed from the LPL. That's right, so let's take a look at their lineup. In the top lane, it's go going with Loveling in the jungle, who serves as the shot caller for the team. He is considered to be one of the best junglers in China. Their mid laner is cool. During the group stages at Worlds last year, he held his own against Faker and led his team to victory against SKT T1K. Starting at 80 carry for OMG is San, and he's joined by Dada777 at support. All right, guys, the third team in Group C is the number two seed from the European LCS, Fnatic. Thanks to their Season 1 World Championship, Fnatic is one of the most famous League of Legends teams in the world. Fnatic made their second trip to Worlds last year after finishing first in both the spring and summer splits of the European LCS. At the Season 3 World Championship, they managed to get all the way to the semifinals before they were finally taken out by China's Royal Club. They returned strong once again this year, winning the spring split, but they were beaten by Alliance in the summer split playoffs, which is the first time they have not finished first 
in the European LCS. Now let's take a look at their lineup. In the top lane for Fnatic, it's Soaz, while in the jungle, it's Season 1 champion, Cyanide. That's right, and in the mid lane, it's another member of that Season 1 championship team, the man whose name is synonymous with backdooring the Nexus, it's Peke. At 80 carry, it's Reckless. His first season in the LCS ended with him tying the record for most kills, breaking the record for least deaths, and earning the European Summer Split MVP. His partner in the bot lane is Yellowstar, and like we mentioned earlier, he has the distinction of being one of only two players to participate in all four World Championships. That's right, and the final team in Group C is the number one seed from Korea, Samsung Blue. 2014 was Samsung Blue's first full year as a team, with only the jungler and ADC remaining from their original roster. But they picked up Dade from Samsung White early in February, and after that, the team went on a tear. They won first place in the Champion Spring and second place in the Champion Summer, and earned enough circuit points to clinch the number one seed for the Korean region at Worlds. And to be fair, they have to be the favorites to finish as number one at Worlds as well. That's right. All right, so let's take a look at their roster. Starting in the top lane, it's Acorn along with Spirit in the jungle. Their mid laner is Dade, formerly of CJ Entis. While he was briefly a member of MVP White, he later swapped places with Blue's mid laner. And that's where he proved himself, winning the season MVP title after leading the team to a first place finish this spring. That's right, Deft is their AD carry. And interestingly, he is considered by TSM's Lust Boy to be the best AD carry in the world. And while Lust Boy has his back here in North America, the player who will be supporting him in lane is the guy you can't help but love, Hart. That's right, and these are the Group C teams who will be facing off in Singapore beginning on September 25th. The number one seed from Korea, Samsung Blue. The number three seed from China, OMG. Along with the number two seed from the European LCS, Fnatic, and the number three seed from the North American LCS, LMQ. This is a pretty crazy group, gentlemen. There you have it, Group C. Jat, let's hear from you first about these matchups. If there were to be a group of death, <laughs> yeah. it's this one. Only because, yes, there's a number one seed from Korea, but every other team in here, Fnatic, OMG, LMQ, at one point in the season, were favored to win their entire region. Yep. So there's a ton of powerful teams in here. And just, just as a nice little aside, OMG did take a game off of SKT in the group stage last year, just the one game. So like they've shown they can play Korean teams in that sense, but holy crap, this group is a group of death. Yeah, this is scary. And yes, Samsung Blue, probably gonna be the number one again to come out of this group, just because I think they can handle what both OMG and LMQ will throw at them early. And uh, Fnatic actually is one of the most interesting parts of this group because they're kind of the wild card. You never know what to expect mm -hmm. from Fnatic at mm -hmm. these international tournaments. They usually show up really big. Right, last year Fnatic 2 0'd everybody except Vulcan in their group last year. They destroyed uh, uh, what Samsung Ozone at the time they mm -hmm. were. So uh, you can't get these guys out ever. LMQ I think also is an interesting underdog here because they were one game away from probably being the number one team in North America, mm -hmm. right? They went 3-2 to TSM who won NA. They were really close to winning that series overall. Uh, LMQ versus OMG is gonna be a really fun match. I was hoping LMQ would draw a Chinese team in the group mm -hmm. stage just to see how that battle goes. And I think OMG is a fun match for them. Also means that Cloud9 and Fnatic are going to be in different groups, so we might not get to see them Ooh. battle at Worlds. Like <laughs> they can still match so, up in the quarterfinals. They though. can still, yeah. They're <laughs> actually going to be they're going to be quarterfinal matchups, actually, or at least those groups will hit each other. So, yeah. a lot of really fun things going on here. Uh, but yeah, it's a bunch of teams that any of those four could go. I like that you call out the OMG versus LMQ matchup mm -hmm. because this, I think, is the coolest Chinese team for LMQ to pull because this is the Chinese team that have the weakest bottom lane and Vasily might be able to carry them through this. If they can get a lot of momentum down there, I mean, this is a really cool matchup. Yeah, there's actually too much neat stuff going on. <laughs> yeah. uh, you mentioned the Samsung Blue and the Fnatic thing. Dot is going to have some memories of that Fnatic team, right? Uh -huh. It's yep. pretty much the same team, save for Reckless. I really want to see those matchups happen again, even if Fnatic's coming in here a little bit less hyped than they usually would. If you look at how they finished last year at Worlds, Fnatic was the highest finishing team, plus they've right. taken home a championship before. It's just, it is the group of death. And what I want to see as well, specific matchup-wise, is Cool versus Xiao Wei Xiao. 
Xiao Wei Xiao <laughs> was just an incredible mid laner all throughout this split of the LCS, and Cool basically carries OMG. So mm -hmm. I want to see those two buttheads. It'll be a great match. So many cool mid laners actually in this whole group. Now that yeah, like, yeah. we keep on looking at this, it's actually, true. that's Peke the, the and best cool. mid laners. In Peke this group. and Cool, two of the oldest mid laners. Dade right now is but at peak form. Mm -hmm. This is ridiculous. All right, you guys are oogling over there, but we need <laughs> to know what your favorites are. So which two teams do you think will jump to the quarterfinals here from Group C? At Kobe, you're up first. Okay, ah, so I get more time. I am going to start with um, w blue. I'm going to okay. take blue to get out as number one. <laughs> and then well, for second, I actually think that Fnatic are going to come out of this second. Um, just because I do like their mid lane match, I think Peke will be able to handle cool. But their bottom lane, Reckless and Yellowstar, I think, are going to mm. be the big key for Fnatic coming in this, in this group. I want to go third now because you talk about that bottling matchup and suddenly I think about Fnatic really <laughs> highly here. It's hard for me to say. I'm just going to say OMG, though. Oh, uh, you're I just To win the group? Uh, second place. I mean, okay. I think we're you're all going to say blue. blue is number one. Okay. Um, but for number two, I think OMG, uh, just barely, but who knows? I mean, you say we're all the same. No, <laughs> Blue is probably going to win this on. group. Uh, <laughs> just because they're the number one seed from Korea, and it's hard to argue with their history of success. Number two, I probably got to go with Kobe with Fnatic, only because they seem to show up at all these big events. But because of OMG there, it's totally a toss-up. OMG mm -hmm. is a powerhouse. They yeah. destroyed their groups last time. I'm changing my mind. I'm going Samsung Blue and OMG. <laughs> there you go. Fnatic is probably going to be third in this group. And LMQ right. is really unfortunate. They have to show up in this group. Uh, it's probably their unluckiest possible draw. All right, guys. Thank you very much. We'll be checking back with you in just a little bit after Group D. And once again, we would like to know your two favorites. Tell us which two teams you think will advance from Group C by sending a tweet to at Esports and use that hashtag WorldsGroupC. And we want to hear your creative names for Group C as well, preferably something that sounds classy yet intimidating. Send your best suggestions to us at Lolly Sports with that hashtag at World's Group C so we can highlight our favorites when we head to Singapore. That's right. And last but not least, it is time to reveal Group D, who will be joining Group C in Singapore on September 25th. So here are the final four teams that will be competing in the 2014 World Championship Group Stage. And the first team in Group D is the second international wildcard team, Brazil's Kaboom Esports. Not only is Kaboom a lot of fun to say, but they were one of the top teams in Brazil throughout 2014. They reached the Brazilian League Championship Series finals three times, but came away empty-handed every time. Yeah, but when it mattered most, Kaboom stepped up to the challenge and earned Brazil's spot at the International Wildcard Tournament. At PAX, they swept PEX in a three games straight to become the first team from Brazil to compete at the World Championship. So let's check out the lineup for the pride of Brazil. In the top lane, it's Lep, who is considered to be the best top laner in Brazil. And in the jungle, we have Danagorn. Tane Owens is in the mid lane with Minerva at 80 carry and Dan's at support. And the next team joining Kaboom in Group D is the number three seed from the champions, Najin White Shield. Najin White Shield is one of the oldest eSport teams in Korea, and this year they finished in the top five of champions three times, including a second place finish in Champion Spring. Now, because of their circuit point total, they qualified to compete at the Korean regionals where they stepped up their game in a big way. They swept KT Bullets and KT Arrows 3-0 on the way to the regional final where they crushed last year's world champions SKT T1K three games to one to win the third Korean spot at Worlds. So let's take a look at their roster in the top lane, it's Save. In the jungle, it's Watch, who will be making his third straight trip to Worlds. In the mid lane, it's Goong, while their bot lane consists of Zepha at 80 Kara, 80 carry, and one of my favorite names, Gorilla at support. <laughs> and the third team in Group D is the number two seed from the North American LCS, Cloud9. Cloud9 rolled into the North American LCS last summer and have dominated ever since. Cloud9 finished their first split in the LCS with a 25 and three record and swept their way through the playoffs to earn a spot at the season three Worlds. However, they fell in the quarterfinals to Fnatic. That's right, Cloud9 bounced back strong this spring, winning their second straight title, but this summer Cloud9 failed to finish in the top spot for the first time in their LCS careers, losing to Team Solo Mid in the regional playoffs. And unlike most teams in the World Championships, this is a roster that has been together for almost two years. So let's check it out. 
In the top lane, it's Balls with Meteos in the jungle roll. And in the mid lane, it's cloud Nine Shot Collar, High. In the bot lane, we've got Sneaky at 80 carry with Lemon Nation and his notebook at support. That's right, and that brings us to the final team in Group D, which is the number one seed in the European LCS, Alliance. Alliance was formed last December when the Evil Geniuses moved to the North American LCS. Froggen stayed behind and assembled a group that many have referred to as the European Super Team. After a rocky start this spring, the team really started firing on all cylinders in the summer. They earned Europe's number one seed at Worlds by becoming the first team other than Fnatic to win a European LCS split when they took them out during the regional finals at Gamescom. So let's take a look at their roster. In the top lane, it's Froggen's former Ev Evil Geniuses teammate, Wicked, who has the distinction of being the first player in the world to reach platinum. Shook is in the jungle, while the man in the mid lane, Froggen, not only put the team together, he also won the spring split MVP. He's a busy guy. This is his second trip to Worlds, having qualified for the season two Worlds with CLG EU. That's right, and coming into AD carry is Tabs, who qualified for Worlds last year with the Lemon Dogs. Supporting the team is Nif, who made the trip to Worlds in seasons one and two. So as you can see, this is a team with a lot of World Championship experience. That's right, and these are the Group D teams who will be facing off in Singapore beginning on September 25th. The number one seed from the European LCS Alliance with the number two seed from the North American LCS Cloud9. Joining them is the number three seed from Korea's The Champions, Najin White Shield, and the international wildcard team from Brazil, Kaboom Esports. That's right. And there you have it, Group D and the final 14. So gentlemen, We'll turn to you one final time. Freak, let's hear your thoughts. It's going to be a fun group. This is another really good group where you've got a big toss for who's good. I'm really excited for the Cloud9 Alliance matchup especially. It gets to be another <laughs> one of those good uh, NAEU rivalries there. Both um, could be considered the best team in the region there. And it's going to be a bunch of fun. I think Kaboom is unfortunately going to be uh, out of their league, as most of the wildcard teams probably are. Um, and Kaboom have drawn into a pretty rough group here as well that you really can't talk about. Uh, enough how good Shield is. They went 9-1 and one in the regional qualifier. They're an incredible group of players, and they're going to be a bunch of fun, uh, fun games to watch. Yeah, I have to say, this seems like the most level-headed and like calm group of mm. the groups. Like mm. Alliance, Shield, and Cloud9, none of them are really going to go crazy early. And you mentioned the Cloud9 versus Alliance matchup. Mm -hmm. I want to see this Cloud9 versus Shield matchup. Balls versus Sh Save in the top lane. True. I've been waiting for this. I really want to see that one go down head to head. And I also want to pick out one more single target matchup here. Uh, Kaboom versus Alliance. Kaboom's mid laner, Tinone, just like this prodigy, this young Brazilian guy who's like one of the best mid laners, uh, best mid laner in all of Brazil, go up against Frog. And that's, that's the chance that he wants to try and prove himself versus the king. Yeah, I was I was so eager after we drew Group C, like during the Group C draw, uh -huh. I was like, well, I crossed several elimination. These are the teams in Group D. Right. So I've been looking at some of the just overall groups, some cool stuff here. This is the no Chinese team group, just like yeah. there's a no Korean team group in Group B. Interestingly enough, ev there's B, C, and D are all NA versus EU groups. So it's not like a no NA or EU group, except sure. they're all in Group A. As to your points, it's kind of a three-way Three dog race here with Alliance, Cloud9, and Shield. I would not consider Shield the shoe in in this group, only because Alliance gets a lot of respect internationally. Mm -hmm. Cloud9 has actually won some international tournaments before, and we don't necessarily know how Shield's going to be doing against this competition. Remember, Shield was a team that was middle of the pack for pretty much the entire season. Then they went on that nine and one run at the end, which uh -huh. was incredibly <laughs> impressive. Yeah, yeah. But I think it was because teams weren't necessarily preparing for them. And I do think there's holes that you can exploit in Shield. The thing is with Shield, why I liked watching them so much on their run through the gauntlet mm -hmm. is because they used so many different strategies. Yeah. They had pick comps with Ari and Twitch. They had a five man range composition, which everybody just has to focus fire. They kite back and they single out a single person. It was like a WoW Arena tournament or something <laughs> where they had to quickly target switch it was so cool to watch and then they also do things like two-man sneak baron there's so many cool little aspects to shield i'm really excited for this group as well because i think those three all match up really really nicely i'm really excited for alliance though in general because i think they are the best western team at worlds and this is kind of like their first safe shot at seeing can you beat a korean team they're facing a really good team in white shield uh and i think even if they lose to them they're still probably going to get out of groups and you just gotta get to see alliance work against some of the best teams in the world all right, you guys look like you're having a blast over there. So we want to know again your two favorites that you see making it through Group D here. Jap, let's start with you. It may not seem like it, 
but I'm a risk taker sometimes. Uh -huh. so, uh, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna take a risk with these two picks. Okay. It's probably a bad idea. I think Alliance and Cloud9 are getting out of this group. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so I probably a mistake. I mean, I'm, yeah. like, I'm saying it's a mistake before I'm saying it, <laughs> but I good. really want to pick Alliance and Cloud9 here. Uh, I'm gonna pick Alliance and White Shield. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say Alliance gets number one, but I'm not a risk taker like you. Uh, <laughs> really not. So that's my top two. But honestly, Cloud9 still has the, upset, has the upset potential though, mm -hmm. and so maybe they they turn some heads and they make that number two spot. Well, since we're taking risks, I'm going to mix it up, and I'm going to go White Shield and Cloud9, mm -hmm. actually. That's definitely some NA bias mm -hmm. because I just love Cloud9, but I really do have faith uh, with them going over there and practicing so hard right now. There's a lot, there's so much that can happen because we haven't seen things like Janna and Jace uh, and like Kale top and stuff in North America, yet all the other regions are doing it, so Cloud9 practicing it now, they definitely have the capability of picking those up quickly. That's something they pride themselves on is instantly picking up the new champions that other regions are using. Yeah, and I need to just finish this up here even though we've already put in our picks. Uh, <laughs> I just remember last year at Worlds how strong Samsung looked coming into it and the fact that they still didn't make it out of groups. It is definitely possible that a Korean team does not make it out of groups. I'm not sure, sure exactly who, and if I had to pick one, I think there's going to be one that doesn't make it out, it would be Shield, which is why I did Alliance and Cloud9. Sure. All right, guys, thank you very much for the favorites, and by now, you know the drill. This is where we want to hear your favorites as well. Which two teams do you think will advance from Group D? Send your picks to at LOLE Sports along with the hashtag World's Group D. And we also want to hear your ideas for a Group D nickname. Hopefully something with the weight and dignity of the four teams headed to Worlds. So send your suggestions to us on Twitter with the hashtag World's Group D. And we'll reveal our favorites during the Singapore Worlds Reveal Show. That's right. And here assembled in their groups for the very first time, we have all 16 of the 2014 World Championship teams. In Group A, we have LPL. Edward Gaming, Korea's Samsung White, the GPL's AHQ, and Turkey's Dark Passage. In Group B, it's the North American Champs Team Solo Mid, China's Starhorn Royal Club, the former World Champions TPA, and Europe's SK Gaming. And a Group C consists of Korea's top team Samsung Blue, China's OMG, the former World Championship Team Fnatic, and the NALCS Rookies LMQ. And finally, in Group D, it's the European Champions Alliance, North America's Cloud9, Korea's Korea's Najin White Shield, and Brazil's Kaboom Esports. And now set your clocks, calendars, and sundials, because here's the group stage schedule. Stage one begins in Taipei with groups A and B on September 18th, starting at 2 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Central European Summertime, and continues through September 21st. And stage two kicks off with groups C and D in Singapore on September 25th. Those matches will begin at 2 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Central European time on the 25th and 26th. And for the 27th and 28th, the times will shift to 11 p.m. Pacific, 8 a.m. Central European summer time. And after two weeks of intense group stage action, it's time for the quarterfinals. We'll move to Busan, Korea for the quarterfinals where eight advancing teams will begin competing on October 3rd at 1 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Central European Summertime. On the 4th and 5th, the games will start at 10 p.m. Pacific, 7 a.m. Central European Summertime. And on the 6th, it's back to a start time of 1 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Central European Summertime. So you gotta write it down. And after that, we'll move on to Seoul with the final four teams battling in the semifinals starting on October 11th and the 12th. And those matches will begin at 1 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Central European Summertime both days. All of that will lead up to two teams fighting it out in a final series that will take place in Seoul's Sangam World Cup Stadium, where the victor will be crowned the 2014 World Champion. That final match takes place on October 19th. And note that the opening ceremony will actually begin at 11.30 p.m. Pacific on the 18th, which is 9 a.m. on the 19th Central European Summertime, just to make things more confusing. For Absolutely. You. As a reminder, there will be a World's Preview show before every stage of the World Championship. Those will air the day before each stage, starting in Taipei and ending in Seoul. That means we have five World's Preview shows headed your way, and you can catch those at 1 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Central European Summertime. 
That's right. We're also excited to announce that Chapter 1 of the Road to Worlds documentary is now live on lolesports.com. Be sure to check out the first of this three-part series for an inside look at the individual journeys of the world's best League of Legends players. You can watch it over on lolesports.com and get more information on the series. That's right. And of course, lolesports.com is a host of wealth of other information as well. That's where you can find the complete schedule for world stats, stats about the teams and players, VODs of matches, and even more. And at the top of each page is the preview show hub, which is home to every episode. So make sure you keep watching and stay up to speed as we head towards Worlds. That's right. That brings us this Worlds Reveal show to a close. And we hope that you are as excited as we are to watch these teams compete on a global stage. Remember, we'll be back with our next Worlds preview show on September 17th to kick off the group stages as we take the first step on the road to Worlds. And now for Dash, Jack, Freak, Kobe, and the entire live broadcast crew, thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.